Yeah. We wanted to give the kids a first class college hockey experience. Our players uh, are not typical what you would think of as club athletes. There's guys like Kale and uh, McAuliffe and Jordan Young that, that like they, they all could be playing NCAA Division I, no problem. If I wanted to go to school for school, I could have uh, ended up anywhere, you know, but we all, we're all here for one reason, I think, and that's to play the game. I just, I don't know, I, I kind of fell in love with the place. I wasn't too big on Tucson, but like uh, Tempe, it was, uh, it was nice. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the ice, Puck drops on a new season for ASU hockey, but who are these boys that pull on the sweater, and why are they here? You know, I started skating when I was probably two years old, two and a half years old, and it was mainly my dad, you know, he was a really good hockey player, and something that I've loved from my first day on the skates. I couldn't see myself not playing, even when I'm... 67 years old, I'm still going to be wanting to go to the rink and enjoy the sport, so. I actually moved out to Arizona when I was uh, four or five years old from New York, and my next door neighbor owned a roller hockey rink, so I started playing through him. Played roller for about four years, and one of my coaches signed me up for ice hockey, and that's how I got into the game. Uh, that's interesting. My dad was uh, a professional football player, uh, so I think he kind of wanted me to put on the cleats. And uh, I picked up a hockey stick, I don't know if I was like five or six, and I, I just fell in love with it. As with other athletes, taking passion to a home at Arizona State was an easy call. We actually had a house down here um, beforehand. I was thinking of maybe going to Moorhead, Minnesota, Concordia College there. It was before all this, before the nice locker room, before the number one ranking. I think when he was recruiting me, they were maybe in the top 20. I met up with, with uh, Coach Powers and he sold me on the program instantly. Just the school, the the nice view of girls walking around campus. Uh, you know, I grew up here, I have friends here, you know, the beautiful climate. I'm 20 minutes from the house that I grew up in. After weighing my options, it was pretty much a no-brainer. Myself and my team, when I played on Minot, we went to uh, down to Arizona. We did well, and it, it was cool. Like, it, the weather was great. You know, I'm used to snow days in Minot, freezing, you know, my butt off. It's pretty ridiculous. Tempe, it was, uh, it was nice. I mean, the scenery's great, uh, weather's great, and, uh, you know, I can, you know, tan by the pool right now. This is a unique group of guys, and each one brings his own style to the locker room and to the ice. From my second year on here, I was the captain of this team, and it's... I like that added pressure. It, it gets me a little more motivated to play knowing that uh, there are people that are counting on me. I like being that guy that people look to in certain situations to produce and uh, it's something that I, I thrive on. I think I was born to play this game. Everything about it, um, the physicality, um, the energy, the intensity, um, it uh, mimics my personality and uh, it's my gateway. You know, it, it gets uh, all my frustrations and when I play uh, I can skate from everything else. I'm a big Lululemon kind of guy. My closet's filled with that clothing. But this question by far was the most difficult for them to answer. What would I be doing right yeah. now if I wasn't playing hockey? Jeez, probably sitting at home wishing I was playing hockey. I, I don't know. It's, uh, you know, probably having a nine to five job and because, geez, I, it's really my life without hockey. I just, I don't know, even know if I can picture it. Uh, that's hard to say. I don't know anything uh, but playing hockey. You know, I'm a hockey player. That's my identity. Um, but if I wasn't, I'd probably just, you know, be doing the school thing, pursuing a, you know, a business major, and, and probably, you know, get an internship like everyone else that's going to ASU and not playing sports. Like when you're in school, it's like you know the safe zone. Um, you know, you don't have to worry about you know getting a big boy job or something like that. But I don't know something dealing with people. I love talking to people. I mean, uh, yeah, it's just, it's great. It, it passes time quickly. They see themselves the same as other student athletes here to play their sport. Thing is, they're just a club. For whatever reason, you know, the word club has a, a very negative, you know, connotation associated with it. And uh, because of that, we don't use it. Club athletes are generally kids that couldn't be playing at the highest level. And with hockey, it's different. You know, college hockey is a different level of competitiveness. 
the caliber of athletes that we have here at this program, I actually believe that most of us could play NCAA Division One. We just for some reason they didn't take the right path or they didn't get the opportunity. But uh, we have very talented players on this team, and uh, I, I really think that we could compete. The talent pool is full and rich, but unlike football and basketball, there aren't many places to showcase it. There's 50 plus Division I scholarship programs, and even on those programs, full ride scholarships are few and far between. So there's a lot of really, really high level hockey players that slip through the cracks. Some of these guys have been offered Division I spots in NCAA teams, and they want to come to ASU and play for our program. Ranked number one at 34 and 2, the Sun Devils had their best regular season finish in their history. This team is something that is completely different from my last three years. The talent level of this team is just the sky limit, or I don't even know how to put it really. The depth that we have this year is just something that I don't think I've seen on any team of any level I've ever played on. If we are going to recruit the high caliber kids and hold ourselves to that standard when they're here, it's only uh, right for us to hold the program all the way around to the highest of standards. I really feel like this is a team that could win a championship and anything less than a championship this year with this group of guys is just going to be a failure for me. In spite of being a non-scholarship program, the organization continues to grow and improve. The program has evolved exponentially and, and most of that credit goes to Coach Powers and the players. When I came back to ASU as an assistant, it would have been six years ago, um, it, was, uh, it, was, it was pretty hodgepodge. They used to have mismatched uniforms and travel on separate airplanes to the same location. It's been the work of a lot of people, um, on the ice, off the ice. But the program is, is light years from what it used to be. Now we have it built to where if a kid wants to step in from day one where the expectation is win a national championship, they embrace that. It's been uh, you know, a huge change um, from my freshman year now to our facilities. It's been really great to see that change. What they've created here, like you know, this whole new establishment with the dressing room, it just kind of brings the team closer together. I've always thought that this program could become what it is today, and, and a lot of people have, and luckily we have a, a group of people together that, that share that passion. Coach Powers, he does an amazing job. I couldn't do it. You know, he, he loves this program. You know, I have all the admiration in the world for him. The improvements made to their facilities are just the first piece in creating a Division I atmosphere. Coach Powers and I want to do everything right. We wanted to give the kids a first-class college hockey experience as if they were playing NCAA Division I. So it was our goal to, to treat them the right way. Before we had this facility, it was, it was a struggle. Um, now that we have this and they get treated literally like, like a Division I athlete, it's going to be a lot easier. It's just laying out what our goals are and, and, and finding kids that share that passion and they want to come here. They can set their goals and standards, but at the end of the day, the team is not NCAA. They face obstacles other teams like football and basketball don't. One such obstacle, the possibility of last minute cancellations. Somebody's got to pay for, you know, $1,000 a night for the ice, uh, the disappointment of the players who are looking forward to playing, etc. So those are the type of situations we try to avoid. And the way you do that is by, by scheduling good teams. We sign a contract with every team that we're going to play in advance so there's no late cancellations. ASU's opponents are spread across the country, which means they pay the extra cash to fly. We really don't bus any place except other than down to University of Arizona. Most places we travel requires us to get on an airplane to do it the right way. A couple years ago, we would travel to Oklahoma by bus, but it's, it's a long ride. It's 13, 14 hours, and it's our experience that even when you travel that way, even though the players supposedly get rest on the bus, um, that when they get to the destination, they're exhausted by the travel. Flying to their opponents doesn't get a second thought from football or basketball, but the hockey players don't take that luxury for granted. I don't want to take a bus, you know, like when I was in Minot, I, I bus like if it like 30 hours a weekend, like that's that puts a lot of toll on the body, especially when you're in classes full time. It's a lot easier to fly in. Uh, we get a large bus that then takes us wherever we need to go and hopefully a good hotel that has uh, free breakfast. Uh, and then we uh, we provide a great lunch and dinner for them as well. Getting the boys fed properly within the budget is another issue at the forefront for the hockey team. Usually what we'll do is Coach Power's wife, uh, Jessica, handles all of our travel arrangements. Coach Powers and Jess will actually scout out the location we're going to find the right hotel that does offer us breakfast, which saves us a lot of money, uh, usually traveling 30 people. Um, and then also we try to find restaurants in advance that we can cater. 
We know the type of food that the boys like. They need to get their carbs, so we find some nice Italian restaurants that will provide salads and pasta and things like that. For late night after games, we'll then cater in pizza or something that's quick and easy so the boys can get something to eat and then go to bed and get some rest. Whereas the athletic department will set the budget for other teams, the hockey club runs on a bake sale budget. We have an expense budget of about $500,000. What feeds that budget is fundraisers, donors, things like that. We're non-funded by the university and have to raise our own money. Student athletes get an average of $13,000 in scholarship and they owe nothing to the team. The hockey players get zero in scholarship while forking over three grand of their own money. We can't offer scholarship under any circumstances at all. Rare occasions, if there's a student that has some financial issues, we might, we might discount the hockey fees that they would pay. Part of the recruiting process, unfortunately, has to be you know, asking the difficult financial questions and laying out the costs and you know, what tuition is and if families can afford it. Nearly 200 ASU student athletes have gone on to play professional sports, but not a single ACHA player has made it to the NHL. So the ASU hockey team takes a different approach. It's about the education first, not about hockey. And if there's anybody that's struggling in any particular class, we're able to know in advance, able to get them the help they need from a tutoring perspective so they can get their grades up. With all of these roadblocks, the hockey players have to love it a little bit more or at least want it a little more. I, uh, I still have uh, aspirations to go play um, somewhere else, possibly overseas after I'm done here. So kind of, uh, you know, playing my options. It's nice to have a degree to fall back on if hockey doesn't work. Preferably, I'd, I'd like to play in Switzerland just because it's a, it's a beautiful country and uh, the hockey's really good there. And um, they allow a fair number of imports for their uh, pro teams there. So I think that would be a good option. Take it day by day right now, um, but obviously I've dedicated my life to the game thus far. Um, I think if I dedicated uh, my life doing anything else, I'd be selfish of me not to try and pursue it. So um, you know, I'd like to uh, see how the season goes. For Delinsky, the end of this season is the end of a career. I'm trying to like talk to as many people and build like a social network because I feel you know like a college degree is great and it's beneficial, but it's not uh, it's not what you know; it's who you know. And uh, I don't know where the next step of my life's going to take me. I would love to stay here. Uh, I'm not too thrilled about going back to Canada. And uh, I don't know. I just I like being active, and it's I need something that you know keeps me on my feet the whole time. Despite the glaring differences between ASU hockey and other ASU sports, there's one thing they all have in common. When all is said and done, they'll miss. Just being a part of a team, having 30 friends that are just instant brothers, you know, it's it's hard to explain unless you've been in a, a group team atmosphere. It's, it's like a family away from your own family. I wouldn't be here if it wasn't for hockey. Coming in here not knowing anyone, it would be awful. Just the fact that I could come here and then you instantly know that you got 30 friends that are just great guys and they all are here for the same reasons. It's something that you don't find unless you play on the same team. Coming to the rink, you know, talking after the game, you know, going out as a team, those are the moments that I'm gonna miss. Half of these guys live in every which direction. I'll miss them. This team, something about this team, like they're just great guys. I've grown up with these guys and, uh, you know, we've started like, you know, a legacy.